the rest of the news Sunday. Hi, this is Dan Earhart with some good news about the debris field from the Japanese tsunami that was one year ago today. It's no longer expected to have a big impact on West Coast beaches. Most of the... <laughs> most... <laughs> Most of the 25 tons has or will sink or will eddy into a trash vortex, of which, unfortunately, there are five in the Pacific Ocean. Beachgoers in Hawaii and California and especially Oregon and Washington are asked to be on the lookout for personal items, such as anything with handwriting or any photos, and to contact a Japanese embassy. We're hoping to get this Sunday edition out while the wires are still up. It's flooding down in Texas. Hey, that song was made famous to all of us by Stevie as the title track from Texas Flood. But it was first done by Larry Davis in the late 50s. Hey, it's been a rough weekend for the arts. Blues man, guitarist Bugs Henderson died sometime overnight Thursday. He had liver cancer, diagnosed just four months ago. Born in Palm Springs, grew up in Tyler. Bugs had the Shuffle Kings in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metro, where he is super famous. Also super famous and leaving us during Thursday overnight was Peter Bergman, comic genius of the Fireside Theater. His death also from cancer, leukemia. And again, it was cancer that took Mobius, who was super famous, as a comic illustrator in France, Friday overnight. And it's Time Change Weekend. Oh boy, spring forward. L.A. Times asked, what if it's all a big fat waste of time? It began in World War I as a way to save energy, go to bed, turn off the lights. But now everybody just stays up later and uses gadgets, and DST may actually cause more energy to be used. Plus, a lot of the world doesn't change time, so it causes international confusion. But all's quiet at the National Institute of Standards this weekend. Their clock, that's the big one, never changes. We just game all the little clocks. This year until Sunday, November 4. Related Facebook memes this weekend. An old monochrome image of an Indian wearing his full headdress and quoting, Only the government would believe that you could cut a foot off the top of a blanket, sew it to the bottom, and have a longer blanket. A political one reads, if you're a Democrat, don't forget to set your clock forward one hour on Sunday. If you're a Republican, set it back 200 years. Well, maybe more like 40 years, says the New York Times today, referring to centrist GOP women becoming disenchanted over issues they thought settled back in the 60s and 70s. So, look for a big push beginning this week from the president for those female votes in 12 battleground states. Ah. But look for the big story this week to be Afghanistan. After an American soldier lost it and went door to door Sunday morning at dawn local time shooting. At least 16 civilians are dead. Can you imagine the horror experienced by those people? A crazed killer at the door with a machine gun firing randomly at dawn this morning. Many people are, and many people will be asking, why? Oh, why? A retreat could make the fall of Saigon look like a Sunday stroll in Echo Park. Less than 72 hours before he died, Peter Bergman recorded his final podcast for Radio Free Oz on the Internet last Tuesday, saying he would be back Wednesday, but the script of that day's blog says his body didn't think so. Reading now from the final paragraph. Take heart, dear friends. We are passing through the darkening of the light. We're going to make it, and we're going to make it together. Don't get ground down by cynicism. Don't let the depression darken the glass through which you look. This is a garden we live in, a garden seeded with unconditional love. And the tears of the oppressed, and the tears of the frustrated, and the tears of the good will spring those seeds. Peter Bergman ended with, see you tomorrow. 
Thank you for listening to the rest of the news Sunday. This is Dan Earhart. See you tomorrow.